Welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Mods Unlocked, and today I'm kicking off a brand new Applied Energistics 2 series. Now in this first episode, I'm breaking down the absolute basics of AE2. So whether you're a total noob or just tired of spaghetti cables, you'll have the groundwork set for more advanced stuff in the future. And stick around until the end because I'm showing you how to build a fully functional AE2 system that'll handle storage and even some light automation. All right, I'm Avo and let's jump in. All right, so there's three things you're going to need to start out in Applied Energistics 2. You're going to need a way to create power. In this case, I'm using a creative energy cube from Mechanism. And if you guys want a guide on Mechanism, go ahead and check the description. I have my entire playlist down there. Secondly, you're going to need a charger. Now this is the first thing you're going to need from Applied Energistics 2. And then third, you're going to need an inscriber. And this is gonna be used a little later on and I'll show you why here in a second. So after you get yourself a charger, and to be clear, this is what the crafting recipe looks like. It's just two copper with five iron ingots. You're going to need to get yourself a meteorite compass. Now you can just find meteorites by just exploring and then finding them on the map, just like this right here. But say you don't wanna do all that because it's way too much time and you don't have a lot of that as it is. So all you need to do is create yourself a charger, connect that charger to any power source. As you can see here, it's the universal cable and then place a regular compass inside. So if I were to place this compass inside there, it's going to turn it into a meteorite compass there. Now, I want you guys to take a look at the bottom. As I turn, it is in fact following the meteorite. And the reason I'm telling you to look at the bottom is because when I hold it in my hand, it doesn't actually work. So really it's only useful in your hotbar. And it is actually following that meteorite because it is attached to that mysterious cube right there. Now, speaking of the mysterious cube, let me go ahead and grab myself a pickaxe and I'll show you what this mysterious cube actually does. So I have myself a Fluix pickaxe here, which is funnily enough from Applied Energistics 2. Now I go into survival and when I go ahead and try to break this, it's going to give me a ton of random stuff. Well, this stuff isn't actually random after all. In fact, it's very useful. So it gives you inscriber presses that you're going to need. And these are all the presses that you're gonna need for the rest of the mod. So it gives you one of each and I'll show you guys how to duplicate them later. And it also gives you a guide just in case you get lost in the mod. Now, the next thing you're going to need while you're inside the meteorite is some Certus Quartz crystals. So as you can see, this one is a cluster and it's going to give me four crystals, but this one isn't quite grown yet. So when I break it, it's actually going to give me dust instead. So this is a cool way to get dust. And you can also break the Certus Quartz blocks right here and craft these into crystals as well. It gives you four of them. Now, obviously I don't recommend breaking the budding blocks because these are the only way to grow these again, but I do recommend breaking the blocks around them. So as you can see, if I were to break these right here, then you would actually get four times more than you would otherwise. All right, now that we know how to mine that stuff, next up, let's talk about how to actually make some Certus Quartz dust really quick, and then I'll go over some basic uh, pipes and some basic items. So to make some Certus Quartz dust, you're going to need that other thing I was talking about, which is the inscriber, and you can connect it directly to your power source, like it is right over there, or you can connect it to the energy acceptor, which turns FE or any other power into AE power for applied energistics. So once you do that, it is powered up. And say you got some Certus Quartz from the meteorite over there, you just place that in this slot right here and it's going to start creating Certus Quartz dust. All right, so now that we got some of the basics out of the way, I wanna talk about these pipes over here and this is a lot less complicated than what it looks like. So what this is actually showing is that these white pipes cannot connect to a pipe that isn't white. So you can see I have these smart cables, these dense smart cables and these glass white cables. They're all the color white, so they all connect to each other. But once I introduce some blue ones into here, you can see that it is not going to connect no matter where I place it around which type of pipes. This is great if you're going to be making a complicated system or more than one system, which I'll show you how to do in a second, but it isn't very great if you want these to connect. So you can use a Fluix cable in between to actually connect these but you can't connect them automatically just like this. Now, speaking of cables, let's go over each one. So this is the white glass ME cable and the glass cable can transfer power and up to eight channels and it cannot connect to dense cables or any other cables of a different color. The smart cable shows how many channels you are using at a single time. So this is what a smart cable looks like here. And again, I'll show you exactly how it works over there in a second. The smart cable can also only carry up to eight channels. Now the covered cable is this blue one right here. 
and it's just a regular glass cable, but it looks more solid. Next up is the dense cable, and it can actually carry up to 32 channels. So those can only carry eight, these can carry 32, and as you can see, they're also pretty solid looking as well with some little glass textures there. After that, we have these dense smart cables, and it just combines the regular smart cables where it shows you how many you're using with the dense cables where it lets you use 32 and then you can see that you'll have smart dense cables here and then my personal favorite because they to me look the best but they're also the simplest is the regular fluix cables and as you can see they can connect to anything no matter what next up let's talk about some basic items and we have two wrenches to start out with we have the nether quartz wrench and we have the certus quartz wrench and they do the same thing they're just different and all they do is you can pick things up without having to go through the breaking animation of them which i broke there because i am in creative after that we have the color applicator and what this does is if you had a pipe over here that you wanted to paint and if this had paint inside of it which i'll show you how to load in the next video you would be able to color not only pipes but also glass as well after that we have the nether quartz cutting knife and this can name your inscriber presses. It can make cable anchors, which is this right here. And it can also name your machines. So if you take a look at the top, right now it says inscriber, but I can make it say like and subscribe. And I spelt that wrong, but whatever, go ahead and subscribe down below. And if you take a look at the top, you can see that it says like and subscribe now. Now, another thing you can do is actually right click here. And then say you had an iron ingot with you. You can then also name this as well. So I'm going to name this. There we go. Now we have a press that is a very awful name. After that, we have a cable anchor. And this is actually really cool. So uh, these are cable anchors right here, this little texture. And what these do is if I were to place that down without the cable anchor, you can see that these will all connect. But say I placed a cable anchor here. Then once I go to place this cable back, it will no longer connect to this bottom cable, only the cables around it. And again there, it's not gonna connect to that part because the cable anchor is in the way. Now there's a second thing this cable anchor does and it's creating some facades. So as you can see here, this looks like it's a block, but really it is a facade of a block. And all it is is just a flux cable on the inside. Again, to do this, all you need is a crafting table whatever specific block you want to place and then four cable anchors around the outside and as you can see i now have a cable facade when i break this and then replace it i can make it look like this instead now let's go over what these do really quick so i already told you that this is the power that i'm using this is the energy acceptor and all it does is again it turns fe into ae this is basically applied energistics battery so it's an energy cell and it holds 200,000 ae and this is the dense energy cell which holds 1.6 million ae next up we're going to need to make some silicon so the reason i showed you how to make certus quartz dust earlier is because it's in the recipe for making silicon so all you need is some coal some certus quartz right inside of here and then as you can see it's going to start cooking it and that will turn into silicon then you take that silicon over to an inscriber place an inscriber silicon press on the inside and some silicon right here and then this will start filling up which will give you some printed silicon after that let's make some printed logic circuits and to do this all you're going to need is an inscriber logic press inside of an inscriber a gold ingot and then this is going to start filling up and it's going to create a printed logic circuit now from there we take our printed logic circuit place it here our printed silicon we'll place it at the bottom and then we'll throw some redstone dust in here and this is going to start making logic processors after that i want to talk about how to charge your certus quartz and to do this you'll just need a charger which is hooked up to some power which is right back there and I'll go ahead and grab this Certus Quartz right there and place it inside of there. And as you can see, it is now charged Certus Quartz. After that, let's talk about how to make the engineering processor. And to do this, all you're going to need is an inscriber engineering press, a diamond that goes right here. That's going to start filling up once again, and it's going to create the printed engineering circuit. Once we have those there, we can use our printed silicon from earlier and our redstone from earlier, place those inside of there and with the printed engineering circuit and as you can see it's going to create another engineering processor to make the calculation processor all we're going to need is an inscriber calculation 
some certus quartz right here and then it's going to start creating a printed calculation circuit we then take that circuit place it at the top up here and then place some silicon and some redstone dust once again in those two spots there it's going to start filling up and it will make your calculation processor like so after that let's talk about how to make fluix crystal and to do this all you're going to need is some nether quartz some redstone dust and some charged certus quartz throw all three in a one by one cube of water and as you can see it will turn into fluix crystals you can then take these fluix crystals and throw them into an inscriber if you want to get fluix dust and speaking of dust you can also take some sky stone which is right over here place that inside of inscriber and that will also give you sky stone dust which you can see right there next up let's talk about how to make an eight channel ad hoc setup and this ad hoc setup just means that an ME controller is not in the system. It's just an ME drive, an ME terminal of some sort, either the regular or the crafting, and at least one ME storage cell, which you can see right here. And how this is connected is it's just some Fluix cables connected to the drive and connected to the terminal as well. Next up, let's talk about how to duplicate your logic processes or some your logic presses, excuse me, because sometimes you're just going to simply need more than one which you get from the meteorite and to do this all you need to do is place any of your presses so as you can see I have them all inside of here and all you need to do is take a block of iron in any one of these in any one of your presses place it there and then it'll start duplicating whatever press is in here so I have inscriber logic press inside of there and now I have an inscriber logic press there as well now before i get to showing you how to set up your very own me system without an me controller i would like to remind you guys to like and subscribe if you haven't already it really helps my channel out a lot and i'm like a balls hair away from 3,000 subscribers all right guys back to the video after that let's talk about the most complicated setup and the best setup that you can pretty much get before you start adding me controllers now this is still an ad hoc setup but i want to go ahead and show you what each of these do so inside of here, I have a bunch of random stuff and I have a charger on this side and I have an inscriber on this side. Now I'm going to break this and I'm going to break this. Next, I'm going to break that one and break that one because I want to show you guys exactly what this does. So if you take a look at these white ME smart cables here, you can see that there's two pink lines. One pink line indicates that this is a channel and these lines indicate channels and the other pink line indicates this is a channel now you might have noticed that there was white lines on there as well and it's because i had these export buses and import buses on each of these inscribers and chargers connected as well so each export and import bus takes up a channel so take a look at this cable when i connect this export bus here you can see that it in fact added an extra line and then again once i add this one it added an extra line as well so now we are at four of eight channels so each bus adds a channel now why do i have these buses here because i actually have certus quartz crystal filtering inside of this export bus and there's nothing inside of the import bus this export bus will take stuff from the system through this cable right here and place it into the charger and then it will take it back out of the import bus back through the system and back into the system and then this one here is just to power it because these don't power it. Now you might be wondering why this isn't working right now. And it's actually just because I'm out of Certus Quartz Crystal. So if I place them back in there, you can see that is in fact changing and it's doing its job like it's supposed to be. Now over here, I have another export bus and this has Skystone in it. And then I have another import bus, which has nothing in it. And again, it's the same principle. It just takes it from the system. And as you can see now, when I connected that, a white light showed up. And then when I connect this one, another white light shows up. So we have four pink lights and two white lights, which means we have six of eight channels, which is what it says at the top, all together. So again, I just want to remind you, this is two channels over here for each bus, two channels over here for each bus, and two channels over here, one for the ME drive and one for the crafting terminal. Altogether, that's six channels. And by the way, this one is creating Skystone dust. So if I place that in there, you can see that it's actually going to start crushing it. Now you may have noticed when I was showing earlier that the ME item storage cell has something called bytes used and also something called types. So let's go over types first because they're the simplest. And basically 
all of these items in here are one type. So if I took out this dark oak plank, it would say 11 out of 63. Then if I took out this oak sign, it would then say 10 out of 63. So it could be one item or a thousand items, but it would still only be one type. Next up, let's talk about bytes used. And for that, I have a little book right here called AE2 Big Brain. And I wanted to go over what bytes versus types are. So since we already talked about types, let's talk about bytes. So bytes equals how much space is used. Each stack uses eight base bytes. So if I have one single item in here, it's going to take up eight bytes. If I have 704 items in here, it's going to take up eight base bytes as well. Now per every eight to 10 items, it's also going to add one byte. So it's eight base bytes for a single item type plus one byte for every eight to 10 items. So a stack of 64 would be 16 bytes. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you is the AE2 spawn command. If you guys wanted to spawn the meteorite, just go ahead and pause the video here and copy what's on the screen. That way you can spawn your very own meteorites, but don't do it in a place that you care about because it will in fact destroy the ground just like this. I didn't do this, it spawned all this ground just like this. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me in this video. If you guys liked, make sure to like, and if you really liked, make sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or even suggestions, make sure to leave them down in the comments. Now I do always read them, I may not have time to respond, but rest assured I do read them and I take everything you guys say into account. All right, I'm Avo, peace.